Okay, I just had a student email me that's having problems uh, calculating this problem out. So um, this is for an undergraduate finance class that I'm teaching. And I'm using this book. It's uh, called M Finance. And the, main, uh, the first author on it is Cornette, published by McGraw-Hill. So that's where this problem came from. But there's similar problems in other, other finance classes you're going to run across. Okay, so... It's basically, it's asking you to consider a 4% coupon. What they're talking about coupon is, or 4%, they're talking about the coupon rate. So the rate, this is actually 4% of the face value. And uh, we could actually put in the face value. We're going to assume that the face value is uh, the base face value is $1,000. Okay. So... So your annual annually they're going to pay you four percent of a thousand. And one thing about uh, treasuries, they pay semi annually, so it actually be two percent every six months. And we'll get into that in a second. I'm just getting, kind of giving you some language of the discipline. So TIP stands for Treasury and Treasury and Treasury Inflation Protected Security. And and the way and they use something called the CPI. And the CPI comes from the Bureau of, in the U.S. It comes from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It's a U.S. federal government. Actually, calculates um, the inflation using a basket of goods. Um, and so it stands for Consumer Price Index. Okay. Um, so anyway, I'm just kind of giving you some uh, uh, information. So you got under the language of the discipline. So it's purchased at the beginning of the year. So you purchased it right here at time zero, right? And then and you and you pur purchased it after this coupon, this interest payment was already made. So that doesn't include someone else got that. You purchased it. So there's no cash flow, no positive cash flow. There's a negative cash flow because you're purchasing it, right? And then in a half a year, so so this beginning CPI is basically based on how much you're gonna pay for it, right? In the middle of the year, you're going to get a payment, and the CPI is 201.1. In the end of the year, you're going to get a interest payment, and the CPI that's going to base you're going to use this figure out that coupon payment is going to be 205.6. And then at the and then finally, you're going to sell it right after you get your coupon payment. So we're not going to consume any interest rates beyond that. Um, so we're just assuming we're going to use this. We're going to use this just to calculate the face value, and we're going to assume. We'll assume the face value, the reference face value, or the face value, adjusted face value, or the purchase price and sell price. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to calculate the cash flows. And uh, so the begin, so first we're going to calculate the purchase price. So I'm just going to go equals purchase price. So I don't have to type it again. And so the purchase price is going to be equal to our thousand dollars fast face value. And, and then you're going to have to adjust it. Remember, this is a reference CPI, so you're going to take it times. I'm going to put parentheses around it just so you understand what we're doing. This is what we. This is the CPI when you purchased it, and this is the CPI, the reference CPI from from when you know when it was valued at a thousand dollars. And so the purchase price is this. This is how much it would have been purchased for if you assume you're purchasing it at. Uh, I'm going to make that negative. The reason I'm making that negative is because that's money coming out of your pocket, right? That's why this arrow is pointing down. It's a, you're buying it and then you're getting these positive and in return, you're getting these positive, uh, positive cash flows in the future. So the first cash flow you're going to get is the mid middle of the year coupon payment in the middle. Of, let me put the formula here. In the middle year coupon payment, well, that's going to be equal to, again, it's going to be equal to $1,000. And that's going to be times. And uh, by the way, let me F4 this because I want to copy this down. It'll be easier that way. $1,000 times. Um, you don't have to, but that way I'm going to make it so I don't have to type it in again. And then times. Uh, so you're going to, so the, my mid CP, well, first we're going to take this 4%. I'm going to go ahead and F4 that too. So I don't have to type it again. And that's going to be divided by two because you're going only going to do it in a half a year's worth. So it's only 2%. And then you're going to adjust that $1,000 for the mid CPI, which is going to be times this 
divided by the reference. I'm going to go ahead and F4 that again. You'll see why I f 4 it. That's called an absolute reference, so they won't move when I copy it around. So the mid-year coupon payment is $20.99. $20 the reason I did it that way, now I can go copy it. Now I can go end year coupon payment. So I go end And the end year coupon payment, I can just copy this down and it should automatically, if you look at it, it automatically will. It stayed on 4%, even though I copied it down because I have those dollar signs there. It stayed on this. It stayed on each one of the dollar signs that stayed there. Like the only one that moved was a purple one. So it moved from here to here and everything else had, had to stay the same, right? So that's why I put those dollar signs. You don't have to, but it's just so you don't have to type it again. And then, uh, and then finally we can do, uh, the sell price, right? So finally we, we've done this coupon, this interest payment, which is called a coupon payment. And then finally we're going to sell it. So the sell price, um, we could calculate it. It's going to be, again, it's going to be equal to a thousand dollars times. Uh, so now you're just going to take it times the ratio of the ending CPI divided by the reference CPI. And we sold it for that, right? So, so we purchased it for this. So that's just in the order. So now we know this is equal to this. I'm going to make this positive because it's already pointing down. So a negative, negative is a positive. So the purchase price was this, right? This payment is equal to this. This payment's equal to this. And the sell price is equal to that. Right? So that's what we got going on. All right. So now all we have to do to figure out our capital gain. And actually, uh, you could call that, uh, but also call it total dollar return. Well, it's not capital gain. We'll just call it total return. The capital gain is just, uh, the difference between these two numbers. These are interest payments. So that's not capital gain. So let's call it total return. And all we have to do is sum these, right? So I'm going to draw a little line under here. If I go auto sum, well, my, my total return in dollars is, is that, right? So, um, so that's as easy as that. So I'm, you can look at the solution. The book did it. They did it a little bit different. Um, they still calculated some, I mean, I think this is an easier way to do it. You know, there's more than one way to solve these problems, right? And then, uh, and then we can calculate something. They want to know the total return in percent. Actually, I probably should have just, instead of typing this, I just could have went equal this, right? And I can copy this down. And the total return percent is equal, just equal to how much we got divided by how much we invested. So we invested 1,041. So in this case, we don't want this to be positive. So I'm going to make this negative, negative makes it positive. And then and this is in dollars. So I'm going to format it as percent. I always take percent out to a couple places at least using this little thing right here. And that's the answer for the total percent return. So it's as simple as that. Um, so if you like this video, my little pic my picture will come up. You can go ahead and uh, uh, subscribe to my channel by clicking on my picture. Give me a thumbs up. Give me any comments. Um, hope that helped. Bye.